The strapping bison have roamed the grasslands of North America for centuries. The once thriving population, with counts in the millions, dominated the continent from the Ice Age until the arrival of the Europeans. Championing back from the brink of extinction, they are now once again a thriving population that is greatly sought after for its high quality meat. Let's check out the home where the Glengarry bison roam, just northwest of Airdrie. Hi, my name is Gary Sweetnam. I'm the manager and producer for Glengarry Bison. My name is Cynthia Sweetnam, and I've been raising bison for 19 years northwest of Airdrie, Alberta. So Cindy and I met at the city of Calgary. I say 19, but she, I think Cindy says 20 years ago. I think it was 1993. We sort of just took off from there and we both had the same interests and shared the same love of the outdoors. We went on the prowl to try and find us uh, a place that was in the sort of the triangle is what we call it. I always wanted to scout around in between a triangle which is Cochrane, Airdrie and Calgary. It had to be close for us because uh, we both worked for the city of Calgary. So we were commuting back and forth uh, every day, four days a week, and then we were working on the round. And then we we worked together on this operation. We, we started this place basically uh, together with boarding horses. That quickly fanned out to raising bison. Started off probably with about 12 to 13, I think, uh, heifers. And then we developed into a herd of over 100 and 140. And right now we're back down to around probably 60 animals. On our ranch here, uh, we have a small store with a uh, walk-in freezer and we typically just go word of mouth. And we used to do markets, but we found we got too busy to do markets, so we have a van with a huge advertisement on the front of it and back of it. We use that as our billboard, and we also have a website that generates a lot of business as well. We'll sell one steak to a hundred steaks. I mean, we usually have all the primal cuts already in the, uh, the coolers, and then we have everything from the burger patties, especially in the summertime. We actually sell a lot of uh, six ounce patties with no filler, no spices, no nothing, it's just the pure meat itself. And then of course your steak range, I mean everything the same as a beef cow. I mean we've got the primal cuts is the ribeye, the uh, New York and uh, tenderloin, sirloin, etc. So that's it's how our enemy wants it. Even though bison yield all the same cuts of meat as cattle, the difference lies within the nutritional components. Bison meat is about one-third leaner than beef and higher in iron. And to top it off, the Glengarry bison are raised without hormones or antibiotics. I really enjoy the ribeye. The bison ribeye is wonderful. It's not over marbled. There's not a lot of fat on it. It's very flavorful. I prefer a ribeye myself because uh, that seems to be a tender and, and it's got a little marbling, but it's a very nice steak. We have uh, four kinds of jerky, sweet and spicy, hot and spicy, teriyaki and regular. I like them all, but my favorite is the regular um, because you really get the flavor of the meat right through it. We get uh, a company in, in Red Deer to make it for us and it turns out really well and, and then it's all cryovacked in either quarter pound packages or a half pound packages. We generally just uh, like to sell the meat on the store, but we also have an offshoot with, we use all the product of the bison, so we do sell to holistic dog stores our bison bones, and that really is, really, um, is a good offshoot of the product. We have about, I think about 15, 16 stores that we provide. You know, the, the bone, etc., goes from the animal, from the animal to those stores. That's starting to take over a lot, uh, a lot of our time, and it works out really well. So we use everything from the whole animal. We can sell the hides, we sell the skulls, we sell the horn caps. We try to sell everything from the animal. The daily routine for me is to get up and do my chores and feed my horses at uh, quarter to five and then I leave 
for work at six o'clock and then I come home and I redo my chores here and uh, do whatever needs to be done to help Gary uh, get orders ready. I've got quite a variety of stuff to get ready for those stores every day and so what I usually start around six o'clock I can cut probably a thousand pounds of product and get that all boxed in into the walk-in freezers because we have two freezers, one for human consumption for the meats and then we have a pet, pet one. So I usually go around maybe check the fences, check everything that everybody's okay, especially when the calves are on the ground right now. And then uh, I usually go on a patrol with the two dogs, what do you call it, make sure everybody's fine. Then my maintenance, what do you call it, for the animals, make sure they got the water and, and mineral and that's it. They're good for the week. And then uh, the other things is general maintenance around here. If something's broken, if a bull's run through a fence, fix that. If uh, grass needs cut, cut the grass. The highlight of our visit was meeting Annie. She's been like one of the family pets for over two years and proved to be quite comfortable in front of our farm fresh cameras. The animal itself seems to be smarter than anything else because it waits for the snow to go before it starts dropping its calves. So it makes it a, a very uh, easy, pleasant thing for, for the calves too. The way I look at the bison, uh, I don't have to uh, maintain them like, like cattle. I think the, the bison is basically self-sufficient. Uh, it's basically 90% management and 10% work compared with, with other animals as far as I'm concerned. So basically that's the reason I like those animals and, and there's, the birthing is easy as long as you keep the breeding, your breeding bulls and heifers about similar to the same size, don't get them too big, you don't have any problems because most of the animals are uh, when they're born are around 45 pounds. I respect them, I think they're a very smart animal and I think uh, that those animals should be left as natural as possible. I think they're a majestic beast. They are just such a, a powerful animal and they're self-sufficient. Uh, we don't have to do a lot of work or maintenance with them. We do not have to help birth their calves. We don't have to put out bedding in the winter time. Um, the colder the better. They seem to come alive when it gets cold and uh, just generally they're uh, a much better animal to deal with. Sometimes when you look out the window, it's 20 below and there's a cold wind blowing. You don't want to go out there, but those guys have got their face into the wind and they're happy. 